crossing the Pacific to Easter Island required a refit. Ecuador is a beautiful country to travel, but there is barely any market for sailboats. The import tax and the prospect of being far away from the USA for a long time led us to the decision to visit James's family and just bring everything that we need back down on the plane. And we'll proceed. Again, with all these Our prized possession was a new Spectra water maker. I know it's old news for you because you've seen the installation video already, and that's because we're a couple months behind in the series. Besides that, and plenty of other stuff for the boat, we also upgraded our camera equipment big time. We got new lenses, and we got a friction arm to reduce the shakiness of our videos. We made it. It looks like Bahia is showing itself from its best side. It's very, very green. The rainy season started while we were gone. So what are we doing today? We are going to find a place to beach the boat so that we can replace the far stay. <laughs> I think I picked the exact wrong time to do that. Yeah, so we need to replace our four stay. And we are in Bahia del Caracas, Ecuador and we cannot have access to a dock. And this is what's keeping us from leaving for Easter Island. Explain them how, how exchanging a first day works, because I don't think people realize why you need a dock for that. I'm gonna tell you this over lunch. Muchas gracias. So how do you change a first day? First step, measure. Second step, measure again. You don't get two chances. You have to make that four stay exactly the same length as the old four stay. It's like a, a peanut sauce with shrimp soup. Oh man, this is the best two dollars I've ever spent in my life. Mm. So in order to get the four stay off, we have to loosen the back stays and kind of bend the mast forward a little bit. Then we take the four stay off the bottom with the turnbuckle, because that's what tensions it. Take that completely off, drop the drum off, and so you just have the furler track. And that's all gonna stay one piece with the wire inside it. And then we just tie a line to the, to the top of it, and we undo it from the top, and have a guy walk out forward from the boat on the dock, pulling the forestay while I'm lowering it down the, the mast, while you're lowering, lowering down the top of it. And then we cut off the swage lock on the top, we push the old stay out with the new stay, and then cut it, add the Norseman fitting, put everything back together. All the measurements have to be exact, there's a lot of different pieces that go into it, so that's why we need a dock. So what we're doing today is we're gonna scout the areas and hopefully we can figure out a place to beach the boat. What we're looking for to beach the boat is calm, no waves, big tide, and no rocks. So you can see there's a boat right here, but the that boat is made of like really thick fiberglass and they don't even care, man. They'll just beach their boat on the rocks. They're, they're pretty strong. For one reason or the other, all the spots that we had to look at were vetoed by one of us. And one option that was regarded as too sketchy in the very beginning became more and more appealing. Okay, this is the dock at Puerto Amistad. So the other option that we've decided on doing is to take the boat and put it right here. We're gonna use that boat's mooring ball, tie a line to that mooring, and tie it to the back of the boat. We were worried about damaging the dock with this undertakement because the current in this river can get really ripping and then there would be a lot of force pulling on Zingaro. While we were at lunch though discussing this topic, we met a fellow traveler called Ryan and he offered to help us. With an extra pair of hands, we will hopefully be able to do all the work during slack tide. The whole force day thing is really what's keeping us from installing the water maker. We can install the water maker in this water. We need to go somewhere where the water is clearer, but we can without the force day. We just stuffed it in this little chamber over there because we've got enough stuff flying around on the boat right now and it doesn't do us any good. I cannot wait to have the water maker installed so that we don't have to schlep water anymore in our messed up dinghy. And I think this is an appropriate moment to thank all of you guys. All of you that are watching right now, 
that have been watching our episodes in the past, we got this sponsorship deal because of you. Special thanks also to all of our patrons that have been keeping us afloat and fed, to everybody that kicked us a couple bucks on PayPal, to all the people that bought our Zingara crew shirts, to all the people that are liking, sharing, and commenting on our content. We're so glad to have you on this journey and we could not ask for a better crew. Now that we have an independent water supply, we can take you to far out of the way destinations. For you that means to hold on and enjoy the ride. What's up everybody? So we got the forest day off, as you can see behind me. It's going down towards the ground, towards Ryan. And then uh, I'm about to take the top off of it. The red black rope you see in front of me is my spinnaker hire. That's acting as my forest day right now. And then this rope right here, this is the halyard. So I'm gonna pull that rope up here, tie it in a knot around this thing, and then take the pin off and that's it and you can see why i'm doing all that you can see that the force day is popped now i've got the halyard tied to it so this thing is a freestanding unit and can be lowered down okay now i'm just going to go down lower the halyard while he walks it up the dock my buddy ryan has been on board for a couple days and helping me out you're the man
So it's the day after we installed the new force day and we're putting the sail back on. So I want to make sure I'm going to lock wire everything. You're not even going to put that in there, are you? I'm talking too much, aren't I? Both for fine tuning the force day and to install the water maker, we have to leave the river. Luckily, we know just the place to go. So we're like two hours into the journey. I put the guys to work. Brian is on watch. James is making pizza. He makes the best boat pizza ever. This is us now. Computer crashed, but we went pretty straight down here. We motored out this far and then sailed down here. This is us and this is where we're gonna go. So last time this whole funkiness took us two days. Yep. Sad but true. So what just happened? I almost hit a boat that didn't have a light on. He just had a little lighted buoy right in front of him. I don't know what he's doing, but Jesus, we almost hit him. We almost hit yeah, him. Yeah, we did. I mean, we were on a collision course for his buoy, so I turned off and I didn't even see his boat. And we were like, holy shit, had we not turned off, we might have just rammed right over his. Yeah, yeah. Those things would mess my boat up too. They're, they're like solid. Absolutely. We're attacking. No, we're not. What do you mean, no, we're not? Oh shit. So right after we almost hit that boat, we were like, whoo, we, we made it. And then Kimmy was like, uh, we're tacking. I'm like, no, no, we're not. We can't be tacking right now. We tacked like right back into the boat. And the and the lee, the leeward side, which is now the windward side of the main sheet, was so tight that I couldn't even steer the boat. We were going right for him. Again. Again. Like perfectly wrong time to do that. So that's fun. This is boating. The real, the real part of sailing, especially through Ecuador. Nobody has their lights on. There's no light on this guy. We just saw another guy without his light on. Ryan, it's your ship right now, right? Hello, hello. How are you doing? <laughs> so, how many here? boats have you seen already without light? Uh, Jesus, it's probably been five, wow. six of them already. How long are we sailing already in the dark? Not very long. A couple of hours. <laughs> Good job, though. We didn't hit anyone yet. No, eagle eyes here. <laughs> cool. It looks like the guys motored all night and my shift is not any different. There's no wind whatsoever. So we're motoring Chisa Plata. Looks like a nice day. Let's hope there's good visibility there and let's hope one of the moorings is free at Isa de la Plata. It's really nasty, but he's so swamp, so he's doing it. Yeah. Thank you. 
Actually, we're having to leave early because we're out of water. And I put 60 gallons in the tanks. I'm not sure what happened, but I'm sure glad we're getting a water maker. We don't have this problem anymore. We can just run the water maker right now. We just cleaned the bottom and, and we, we used a lot of water to take showers because it, it was so gross. These little, these little sea creatures live inside the barnacles and they get everywhere all over you. It's crazy. So, ugh, ugh. But let me tell you, this is gonna be one of the last times we'll do this. So now we're gonna, we're gonna need to go towards the mainland and schlep a bunch of water over here. And then, and then I'm actually gonna install the water maker. I'm starting today. So hopefully we can have that thing running in a couple days and we don't ever have to do this again. made it. We're trying to sail on anchor. Yeah, we're pretty slow. We just made it in, anchored, all good. The sails are being put away. But look at look the swell we're having today. This is the first time we actually see surfers here in um, Puerto Lopez. So that's pretty unfortunate for us because we have to row our dinghy to the beach. So that's not gonna happen. There's a bunch of people out and the swell is giant. We have mahi sushi tonight on the menu. You can either get an avocado mahi roll or a mahi mahi roll. The secret is the rice. You gotta make the rice so it stays soft, but it's, it gets sticky when it dries. So you have to keep it cool. And that, so as you're cooking it, you, you don't put all the water in at once. You put cold water in and cool it down in parts. So you put like half the water in at first, and then after that boils off, you put cold water in. And just keep doing it until the water's gone. And then you keep it warm while you're trying to make the sushi, because you can't make sushi with cold rice. That's the secret. And everything else is pretty easy. So we just went into Puerto Lopez, we provisioned, got some coconuts and some fruit. We just tried to sail of anchor. I was on the helm and the guys were trying to pull up the anchor, but the wind is brutal today. We had to put the motors on and we're gonna head out now to El Islote Sucre. Sucre. feels like. What do you think, babe? It's a beautiful day. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sailing up the coast of Ecuador. We just left Puerto Lopez and we are heading to Isla Sucre. That's right. What does that mean? Sucre. I believe Sucre was the old currency of Ecuador. Commonly mistaken with sugar, which is <laughs> azúcar. Sorry, Captain, I wasn't paying attention. It's okay. I was a bit distracted. We're pretty close to the rocks, buddy. You should probably. <laughs> yeah. There's the rule number one don't hit any rocks. This is 
is exactly how every day should be. You've got a bunch of sailing, you get the sun, we've seen Puerto Lopez, got some awesome drone footage, saw the fish market, head into Boyado, like the traditional food in the country we're cruising. And yeah, sipping on a cold just Sipping on a cold cerveza, that's right. Yeah! Felicidades. Mm -hmm. Bienvenido. to introduce Ryan to you, so we sat him down and asked him about himself and his take on cruising. First of all, my name is Ryan from California. Uh, I'm into basically all of the extreme sports, snowboarding, motocross, windsurfing, kite surfing, free diving, everything that gets the adrenaline up. That's kind of my MO. Uh, I've sailed across the Atlantic twice. I've sailed to Cabo Verde, uh, been to Alaska a couple of times, been fishing on the fishing boat. Uh, that was a crazy story. That was an interesting time in my life, for sure. Uh, come from a great family, oh, that's cute. great place in California, uh, lived in Seattle for a while, studied video production. Yeah. yeah, how likely yeah. was that meeting you, knowing about sailing and video editing? Yeah, he's yeah. got a degree in, edit, in video yeah. production. He was watching yeah. us edit like... <laughs> <laughs> no, he, but he, he gave us so a lot patient. of tips. Yeah, thank you for that, dude. Yeah, really, absolutely. really. Yeah, you definitely. planted the seed. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nice to get some tips from somebody that actually knows what he's and doing. And likewise, for sailing, yeah. I think you guys have kind of given me the push to... Uh, get a boat? Pursue it a little yeah, bit. Dude. Yeah, dude. You yeah. belong on the water. I do. You I know are... I hear. I really totally know. someone that can handle this. I, th I think that the sailing part is actually the, e the easiest part of this life. Yeah. It's dealing with all the problems and being someone that doesn't like freeze in a situation where you can't. And of course, just just being strong enough to not give up. Sure. I've wanted to shoot a hole in the bottom of that boat a bunch of times. And, oh, I'm and sure I, you have. And I think that's what kills a lot of the dreams. Right. You know, people waste a lot of money buying a boat and refitting it and then realizing, oh shit. I don't even like this. Sure. So I, I, but I think you're the type of person that could uh, really thrive and prosper doing it. Mm -hmm. I do too. So what am I waiting for? I don't know. Yeah, what are you waiting Go for? I don't know. Where I mean, should you buy a boat? Buy a boat Guatemala. Yeah, Rio Dulce, Guatemala, mm -hmm. or uh, Puerto Lindo, Panama, right before the canal. I saw a few boats for sale that were really cheap. Uh, you really got to you got to kind of yeah. check them out yourself. Um, if you'd like, I can help you out with that. I would love mm. to help you out with that. Cool. I, I can, I can help some med boats for you. Yeah, yeah. When you get to the point where you want to buy one, sure. You know, if you're going to spend 50 grand on it, maybe it would make sense to fly me in and have me go over with you, and then we sure. could hang out and see exactly what was wrong with it. And That's a great idea. Yeah, or just get a get a, um, a surveyor. It's probably a little cheaper that way. Sure. What was your favorite part? Well, we just got back from Isla de la Plata. We did Isla Sucre. We did Puerto Lopez. And we turned here just about 20 minutes ago. I would have to say free diving with the turtles in Isla de la Plata was absolutely incredible. I would also have to say climbing to the top of that rock Isla Sucre and watching the sun go down had to be one of the highlights of the trip. I would imagine the light casting off the waves coming from the sky. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was and all the birds, beautiful birds just yeah. soaring above us. That was yeah. just kind of a magic place. Almost felt like you could fly with one of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we stayed up there, we watched the sunset. 
over all of mainland Ecuador. We could probably, we were probably a couple hundred feet up and we could see really far. We could see Isla del Plata, 27 miles away, really easily. How amazing were those rocks uh, off in the distance? Looking yeah. towards the sun is over here and the rocks and the layers of rocks. It was, it was picturesque. It was Pretty scary amazing. getting up there though, right? The yeah. swell that night was huge. I mean like, it was probably eight foot swell. We had to time it just right. <laughs> We wait until the water comes up, swim in, grab the rock, and then the water drops out and you're just beached like a seal, basically. <laughs> Make the sound, please. Art, 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 art. He did it, he did it, it was really funny. It turned like a dangerous situation into like the funniest thing, I almost drowned. <laughs> We're both waiting in the water to see if he makes it and he's like, ur, ur. It, was, it was so funny. I needed Good that. Times. I needed somebody to like kick me in the butt to get on that thing. Cause I, you know, we were swimming around it for an hour trying to figure out if we wanted to risk it. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Let's do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it in French Polynesia. It'd be fun. Yeah, well, that's good. Thanks. You're a cool cat. Thank you. Much Likewise. love. Much love. I think we're going to be lifelong friends now. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I sure hope so. Yeah. It's kids like me, but with red hair. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny how similar we are. Absolutely, yeah. A couple times we bromanced out and Kimmy was just looking at us like, oh, that's cute. She was a bit jealous. I mean, yeah. What about you, Kimmy? What, what was your favorite part of the week? I like the sailing and the mahi catching part of oh, it. Oh, that's Ooh, right. We, we caught, caught a mahi. mahi. Yeah. So yeah, mahi. Finally a fish. First fish in Ecuador. And great. James makes the best sushi you've ever had mm -hmm. in your life. If you're on a boat without any ingredients. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers and on to Epic week. next time. Cheers, beautiful people. You too, man.